Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I am back with my Raspberry Pi 3 and I want to show you guys how to install Amibian. This is a standalone Amiga emulator for your Raspberry Pi. On the website it claims it will work with the Raspberry Pi 2, 1, and 0 if they're overclocked, but I'm using a Pi 3 and they do recommend using a Pi 3. This software is amazing. It is a full standalone Amiga emulator for your Raspberry Pi. No other software needed. It installs on an SD card and you can run your favorite Amiga games. I'll be making another video shortly, possibly tomorrow, on how to install Workbench 3.1 within Amibian on your Raspberry Pi. But for now, I want to get you guys set up with the software, get you acquainted with it. Let's get started here. Very simple to do. You're going to need a few things. First off, obviously, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Pi 3. Next, you're going to need an SD card. Now, I have a 16 gigabyte class. 10 SD card. Um, I do recommend using at least a 16 gigabyte. You can get away with an 8, but if you want to put a bunch of games on it, you're going to need a little more space. 16 should be fine for tons and tons of Amiga games. And finally, you're going to need a keyboard and mouse to navigate within Amibian. Uh, it's very simple to use. You can use a PS3 controller if you'd like, or a generic USB controller but I'm just going to be using my keyboard and a PS3 controller to control my games when I set this up. Let's get started. All the links for this will be in the description. We want to go to Amoebian's webpage here. and We're just going to download the newest version. As of making this video, it's 1.313. Very easy. Take you to their Google Drive and we'll just download. It's only about 300 megabytes, so it shouldn't take you too long. We have it downloading here. Next thing you're going to need is Win32 Disk Imager. What this will do, it will allow us to flash an image to the SD card. This is simple software to use. It installs very quickly, and I'll go through it in just a second on how to use it. And I do recommend getting SD card formatter. What this will allow you to do is bring your SD card back to its stock capacity after you flash it, if you ever want to use it in another device. So let's say I just flashed this image. It's a 16 gigabyte card. If I placed it in, let's say, a camera, it will only show up as about 200 megabytes. If you reformat it with SD card formatter, it will wipe everything and bring it back to the stock capacity. Finally, you're gonna need some Kickstart ROMs. Now, I'm only gonna be working with 1.3 and 3.1. This is for the Amiga 500 and this is for the Amiga 1200. It does come with the built-in Eros ROM, but I recommend using 3.1 and 1.3. You can download all of them if you'd like to. These are the main ones that I always use. So now that we have all that downloaded and installed, we're just gonna extract Amoebian. Mine's right on my desktop here. So it's right here. We'll open it up. We have the disk image file for Amoebian 1.313. It may be newer if you're watching this later on. And we have the README. Next thing we're gonna do is open up Win32 Disk Imager. From here, you need to make sure you have the correct SD card chosen here. You don't wanna choose a USB stick and wipe it out. None of your data will be left on it. My SD card is drive E. Make sure you're choosing your SD card. Click on the blue folder and navigate to where we extracted Amoebian. Mine's on my desktop in an Amoebian folder. We'll just double click on the disk image file. We'll click right. It could take a little while depending on the speed of your SD card. It's gonna wipe the card and write Amoebian to the SD card. We're almost done here. Okay, so the write was successful. The SD card is now flashed. You can exit out of here. We still got a couple more steps. What I'm gonna do is place a 32 gigabyte USB stick into my PC. And I'm gonna transfer my Kickstart ROMs and just two Amiga games. We have the ADF and an HDF of Turrican 3. The ADF is just Turrican 1. Okay, so I have my USB here. It's a clean USB and it actually needs to be FAT32 format. I'm just going to take my Amiga games and I'm going to take my Kickstart ROMs. 
Okay, so now that we have our Kickstart ROMs and our games on a USB flash drive, it's time to take that freshly flashed SD card and place it into our Raspberry Pi. We're gonna boot that up. I'm gonna be moving over there now. I'll have a wireless USB keyboard and mouse combo connected to the Raspberry Pi. So here we are on the first boot and it's already done. We're at the menu to start playing our Amiga games. First thing we really need to do is go down to quit. It'll bring us here, and what we want to do is expand our file system, expand our SD card. We're just going to type in raspi-config. Press enter. Expand file system. We're just going to press enter. It's going to expand our file system for us. That'll let us use all of the space on the SD card. Now another thing I do recommend is if you have a Raspberry Pi with one gigabyte of RAM, Go to Advanced Options, number 9, Memory Split, and this is set at 128. I'm just going to go to 256. Press OK. OK. And all we need to do is go to Finish. Would you like to reboot? Yes. So it'll bring us right back here. Now, we have a couple Kickstart ROMs and a couple games we need to transfer to the SD card. We're going to click Quit one more time. I'm going to plug in my USB stick that contains my two Kick ROMs and my two games. And right here you can see we have press a number on your keyboard and hit Enter. I want to go to number four, which is Open Midnight Commander. This is a file management system here. Press four. Enter. Over on this side, we want to go up in the directory. So we'll go to the two dots at the top, press enter. We want to go to media, press enter. This will be our USB stick. And you can see I have a folder with my Kickstart ROMs and my Amiga games. Press tab on your keyboard to move to the next section. We'll scroll down to Amiga and press enter. From here, we'll open up the Kickstarts directory. We'll press tab again to go back to our USB stick and open up our Kickstart ROMs. Now whatever you want to transfer here, you're going to highlight it, just go to it and press F5. And it's going to transfer it into the directory that you chose over here. F5, press enter. As you can see, it's now on my SD card. F5, press enter. Now we're going to back up, go back to the two dots. We want to go to our Amiga games. We'll press tab. We'll go back on our SD card. And I just put these under floppies. Press tab again. I'm going to transfer this ROM, F5, press enter. And Turrican 3, F5, press enter. That's it. Press F10. It'll bring us back. And we'll just go to Reboot System, or you can restart Amiga. I'm just going to reboot the system. Press 2 and Enter. So now it's time to play an Amiga game. If I want to play Turrican 3, I'm just going to click on A1200. Now there are tons of settings within Amiga, and you kind of need to know what to set up in order for a game to work correctly. Some games will run faster, slower, you'll have glitches if they're not set up correctly. But luckily, the guys at Amoebian have set this up for us, and most of these are dead on. They work really well. So Turrican 3 is an A1200 game. I'm going to highlight the A1200 basic, A1200, and click Load. What that's going to do is set all of the parameters, our CPU, our FPU, our CPU speed, chipset, everything we need to run an A1200 game, except for our ROM. This is our Kickstart ROM. Click on the three dots or the four dots, whatever this is. And we're gonna navigate to Amiga, Kickstarts, and this is where we transferred our Kickstart ROMs to. 3.1. Floppy drives, depending on what kind of game you wanna play. Now, ADFs will work within the floppy, but HDF games, you can load through a hard drive. So I'm going to add a hard file, 
click on the dots here. And I will navigate to my floppies directory, and that's where I place my games. Turrican 3, HDF. Press OK. You can go to display, set the width, sound, input. So I also have a PS3 controller plugged into my Raspberry Pi right now. If we go down here, we can see we have Sony PlayStation 3 controller. Now it's already pretty much set up for us. We'll go to custom control, make sure that's checked. And we can start the game now by pressing start. Let's do that. And you'll see the workbench screen when you have an HDF game, like the Turrican 3 game that I have here. Sound works amazing. These games run so well on this unit. Now I am using a PS3 controller to move around here. And it works very, very good. If you want to exit this without rebooting, press F12. Now one thing I didn't mention was auto fire. Some of these games you need to turn auto fire off because holding your fire button does another action. If auto fire is on, it won't work correctly. We're going to resume. And as you can see, I'll hold my fire button. Ah! I didn't mean to do that. Okay. But it works so well. And exiting F12, you can change settings if you'd like. Click resume. But what we're going to do is just change our configuration to A500. We're going to go to the basic, load, ROM. I'm going to go back to my kickstarts. I'm going to load up the A500 kickstart ROM, which is kickstart 1.3. Floppy disks. And we will find our floppies location. And we'll run Turrican 1. Custom control. Now something really cool is configuration. So this is my my 500. So I know this is my 500 configuration. We're going to save this right now by clicking save. So everything, my controller, my ROM, and everything will be saved. And all we have to do is go back, click my 500, and Turrican should start here in a second. This is the Turrican 1 on an A500 Amiga. And there we are, playing Turrican 1. So that's it guys, press F12. So that's how you set it up. Very easy to do. You will run into trouble with some game. And the best thing I can recommend you do is to Google the problem with the game. Somebody else has probably had this same trouble before, and there's a fix out there for it. There are tons and tons of articles and help sections on Amiga emulation. Just Google your problem, and you'll find an answer. Tomorrow, I'll be uploading a video on how to set up Workbench 3.1. It's very simple to do. As long as you have this set up, we can do Workbench within five minutes. Like always, thanks for watching.